Last week, I took a train to Scotland. No, unfortunately not this kind of train, though a child in me, and an adult of course, would wish this was the case. But a modern train, and a long, nearly five-hour journey from London King's Cross station into Edinburgh, and then another two-hour car journey into the Highlands. While on the train, looking at vast expanses through the window, I thought how lovely would it be to experience life in many places and wander many roads if only time and money allowed. But how tied I am to the roots I began to grow in the place where I reside. How little time and little resources and little strength we all have to be everything and anything at the same moment. How rugged landscapes call me, but the comfort and fear tied me to one place. How each of us has to choose their own path, their own meaning to life, while knowingly sacrificing the other. But even still, how wonderful it is to divert from your path sometimes, even for so little, and experience life you've been completely unfamiliar with up until now. But I digress. Edinburgh, Scotland. First few days were spent wandering around the city. A rainy, gloomy, beautiful city. Its towering sandstone buildings and narrow, hidden alleys serve as the means to travel into past. Cozy windows of many dimly lit cafes and traditional pubs and quirky magic shops for all those magic lovers lure you in to hide from the merciless northern winds. In contrast with England's summer temperatures in the middle of October, Edinburgh met us with real autumn. Golden leaves swaying peacefully and falling gently onto the ground. Cold air chilling ice, unprepared travellers to the bone. Though the city warmed us with its many stairs and steep hills, Everywhere we went, every alley we stumbled upon offered beautiful views and many curiosities. No wonder it inspired so many books and fictional worlds. It's just as Charlotte Bronte wrote, who indeed that has once seen Edinburgh must see it again in dreams waking or sleeping. While not the first time in Edinburgh, it was my first time travelling to the Highlands. Under a two-hour drive on scenic roads away from the city brought us to Loch Lomond National Park and then to our little wooden cabin on the shores of Loch Long, a picturesque sea lake surrounded by woodlands and mountains in the area just between the lowlands and the Scottish Highlands. This was, perhaps, one of the most picturesque places I've ever stayed at. A wonderful change of pace, limited space in the suitcase and lack of phone reception forced me to leave technology behind. 
I say that, but I did, however, bring my camera for pictures. It's a difficult balance, isn't it? It seems like in the modern world it's nearly impossible to be completely technology-free. Whatever type of device it is, we simply can't live without any kind of screen and sometimes it feels like there is no escape. I left my computer behind and I never switch on the TV in rental places if they have one. I don't have a TV at home either. My phone did not have the reception most of the time and social media consumption was at its lowest. But another form of technology follows me in life wherever I go. A form of technology that allows me to capture these moments, capture what my eyes can see, and share that piece of my world with others. However, that means I'm almost never truly off. I dedicate my life to capturing stories and emotions with my camera. My memory holds so many moments dear, the moments I can only revisit in my imagination or vivid dreams. I dedicate my time to immortalizing my memories, and I can't truly say if all will be worth it at the end. For now, it makes it possible for me to share my vision with the world. I have so much more to say, but words seem to form in my head quite awkwardly and in pieces as I'm writing this back in my own little place in England. I left my heart in Scotland. These dramatic mountains towering above my head 
clouds that lay on mountain peaks like fluffy blankets. Crystal clear lakes and bubbling rivers, tall pine trees and mossy forest floors. Devastating history and warmest northern people. All of this mesmerized me, stole a piece of my soul. I will, I must come back again. I know, I can't be everything all at once, live everywhere and wander perpetually. I have to grow my roots eventually. But the spirit of adventure, this endless curiosity will always live within. Perhaps one day I will meet Scotland once again, for a longer period of time. For now all I have is these memories to look back at. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Thank you, all the 50,000 of you, dearly. I will see you again, back on Earth or back in England, with my simple life again next week. I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are. See you soon. <laughs>